Hello everyone, welcome back to Tux Riders and another video of the On Demand series. In this video, we want to see how we can create some cool animations in Paraview by rotating the camera. So we want to see how we can control the camera location during animations and how we can play with some filters properties to, you know, to make the animation nicer. So let's go for it. Okay, before going to, you know, to see things in action, I want to show you one example. Actually, this is one of the, you know, one of the videos that I worked, that I created for, for a project, which was actually a mesh embedded inside another, another one. I will create videos for this, uh, you know, for a mesh generation of this project that was quite nice. And then, uh, you know, I wanted to show how this, uh, this mesh is actually embedded inside another one. And then I decided to create a clip and animate it in a way that you know I would uh, you know the, the the viewer can see the the whole mesh in a way that the clip goes on the the, the front moves over the over time over the the, the 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 video time, and then at the same time I decided also to move the camera so the the result is something like this. You see that this is actually the mesh that is embedded inside this one, so the red block in, embedded inside the and the blue block and the camera is, is first uh, first here and here something like from the side and then it moves and uh, it moves in a way that it it uh, it goes to the front of this block in the end of the video and at the same time this clips the clip front moves towards left and in this case uh yeah you will see how it it looks like so you can see that the camera is moving at the same time the clip and you know that it is crinkle clip the clip is also moving and yeah this is this is the results that i wanted to to create and in this video i want to show you how to create something like this and then uh, you know you can create whatever you your creativity uh, you know actually does you you can let your creativity do the job for you so uh yeah, let's uh, let's open Paraview and then uh, instead of having uh, you know a data set, uh, I will use uh, you know one of the sources that I usually use for demonstration, the Wavelet source. You remember we use this Wavelet uh, source in in the Paraview glance video as well. So uh, yeah, the Wavelet. I click apply and you can see that this is actually the wavelet surface you know that these are this is the edges so it's structure mesh i want to have like the surface only and then uh, the rt data so this is the data that i have here and then i have a couple of properties here to to change let's make the box a little bit bigger in one of the directions so like in x-axis that's that's fine you know this you you see a lot of options here because this advanced show advanced toggle advanced properties bottom is enabled so I disable that I don't need it at this moment so 20 minus 20 to 20 I click OK and then yeah this is uh, what we want that is quite nice and we can start from you know this side and then move towards left okay uh, cool Mm, let's make it a little bit different because I'm not sure. Let's make make a clip on it. So I create a clip and then a show plane and it is a normal to the x-axis. That's what I wanted. So uh, that's that's nice. And then we have a property here called offset, which is actually instead of changing the baseline or the origin, which is actually the origin of the block, uh, instead of, uh, you know, if I want to move this interface, move the clip plane, let's say, I can change with this, I can uh, play with this offset. So if I like put it minus 10, you see that uh, if I show the plane, you see that the plane is here, but you know, the plane, the, the, the actual cutting plane is minus 20 offset. So it's moved, shifted towards left or right in this case. So this is a nice property to play with and I can, you know, if it is positive, it goes here. So I can, it can be from minus 20 to 20. And I'm going to play with this offset, but uh, I think, you know, uh, actually I'm not sure if, uh, you know, the properties are okay for this. Let's, 
Uh, I mean, I want to I want to show you that because if we move the camera and then if it is not very uh, visually identifiable, uh, it will be difficult to to distinguish, to, to detect if the camera is moving or not. So let me change some of the properties of this wavelet. So I click this advanced property button and then I change the frequency to something lower. So like this. And I think now it is nicer. Yes, at least in this case, we can see uh, the, the camera is moving. So that's it. And then, uh, you know, we don't have any time at this moment. You can see that there is nothing here. But uh, I think we already played with this animation view in one of the videos before in the visualization series. I think it was in the... Um, for, for physics informed neural networks. Uh, yeah, I opened the animation view. You can see that we have start time, end time, zero and one, and a number of frames, 10. And then nothing happening here because there is nothing here. This is actually the time of the, uh, the animation, which is between zero and one. And then here you see a plus button that I can click and add something to change. You know, this is at the concepts of frames and, uh, you know, data frames, key frames, this kind of concepts that usually you usually face in, you know, film editing and video editing tools and programs. Okay, so I click plus, but before that, I need to select which property I want to change. And in this case, you see that we have clip type offset, which is actually the, this value, the offset here, and I want to change it over time. So I click a clip uh, type offset plus, and now you can see that it's added here. And now by double clicking that, I can change the interpolation, the way that Paraview interpolates it. You can see that there are different interpolation functions and I'm quite okay with the default one. And the time zero, I would say it is minus 19 which is really like very, very beginning because I can change it from two, minus 20 to 20. And I want to just move it to 19 over, over time from zero to one, I click OK. And this is actually, you can see that I go to the first frame and when I play it, although this is very fast, when I play it, you can see that, yeah, something is happening. And you can see that I have actually 10 frames here. I go frames one by one and you can see the differences. That's why I change the frequency. And uh, the result of this is, uh, you know, the, the reason of behind this is the number of frames here. So I can change it to feet T and then go to the first frame play and yeah now it's it's as much smoother because now I have like 50 frames I can change this one to the surface with edges if I want so the animation will be something like this this is really nice and um, yeah let's uh, let's go with, with, with without the edges so I go here and now it's time to, to move the camera. So this is actually what, what, what you saw here. There is the way that I moved the mesh, but it was actually a crinkle clip. So in the video that I showed you in the beginning of this, this, uh, this episode, it was with the crinkle clip enabled. That's why the meshes were like this. You can see that instead of the cutting plane going through the elements, it was really like the, all the edges also uh, visualized. So uh, that's with crinkle element. Here it doesn't have any effect because we have already a structure mesh. But yeah, so uh, let's add the camera also to this. That's the, the interesting part. Uh, you can see that here we have we can change it to like camera. And then the, for camera, we have different things, different properties to, to change. We can follow a path. We can add, a, you know, ask the camera to follow a path or a data. And then we can also easily orbit it around an object. But what I want to do is interpolate camera location. And then I add it. And uh, then, uh, yeah, 
let's uh, you know now we can enter the camera position you can see this is the same uh, you know the, the same dialogue that you can see we have zero and one because this is this is beginning and the end of the uh, time and then I can double click on it and then you can see that I can select the position but there is a nice button here use current which allows us to select the position of the camera at, at the location that we want and get it from the viewport so I want it to be like on the side of the of the object so I go here double click on the camera and then position on the zero on the beginning in the beginning of the video and the, sorry in the beginning of the animation use current okay and then okay again so this is uh, where I want it to be and then I go to the end of the video which is we now we have the full block and I want to really move like the video that I showed uh, that I, I showed you so I wanted to come here, like a little bit far from the block. So a perspective and then, yeah, I think it would be nice, but we can see how it looks like. So uh, on the position one, I double click and then use current. And I think now, I, if I go to the first frame, you see that we are here. And if I play it, you see that, yeah, it's really nice. And interpolation is Ill, like, you know, is something very smooth so this is uh, not a, like a linear camera rotation but something smooth and if I uh, add like uh, you double the number of frames I, I press enter and you see that yeah now we have, we have 100 frames now it would be something like this and this is very very nice so uh, that's that's it actually that's that's how the, we can create the animation so uh, let's play with some of these parameters maybe we can do some uh, you know nicer effects like what if I have like 100 as X frequency let's see what happens this is quite nice I think now we I can add one uh, you know because this is uh, a clip one I'm changing the clip one but I can create another clip on top of clip clip one and because I'm changing the properties of clip one it is a still uh, be, it, it still get affected so I change it to scalar and RT data. There is a button here. I don't know, probably yes. And invert, please. Yeah, this is what I need to have. Let's see how the animation looks like. Yeah, this is nice, but I want it to be, yeah, something like this. When I click this, it, it's, you know, it selects the, the, the value that is actually in the center of the data, so median of the data. So now it should be nicer. You see that I play it and this is the animation that I have. This is really nice, very nice. And then, you know, we can add like, you know, some steps here, like I select this one, I click new. So now I have something in the middle of that. Uh, so for the middle, let's, let's do something cool. So I press OK, I go here. So I wanted to go to the top first and then go to the to the site so i go here again position uh, and then 0.5 use current okay and then okay let's see how it looks like so i start from here i go to the top and then to the side you see how nice it is let me increase the number of frames so that the animation would be smoother at least it's slower here you see that how nice it is and then uh, you know that in in order to control the the, the final speed or let's say uh, actually the speed of playback on the video you can when you want to export it as as animation save the animation like a save it desktop as, as a you know, dummy file name with AVI file format here it asks you for the frame rate so this is actually what you can select for number of frames per second and actually if I select it like for 10 frames per second my final output would be 20 seconds long the video I mean so I can I cancel it and then uh, yeah there are a lot of things that you can play here like um, yeah I wanted to go to the to the top faster like I move it a little bit towards the beginning so you can see that it's here so let's see how it looks like it goes to the top faster and then comes uh, down that's that's quite nice you know as I said you can let your creativity uh, do the rest of the work for you and there are a lot of things that you can do and um, yeah. 
as you can see, you, you saw the, the video that I created. It was actually with a with a black background, so it was something like this, and that's why the, the background was black. So yeah, that's that's really amazing. Although I liked it to go like a little bit slower to the top, so it goes a little bit slower to the lot to the top, and then comes down as the interface as the clip plane moves on. So yeah, that's that's it. And uh, you know, this is the way that you can uh, play with the camera options and the clip filters. You can also, play, you know, whenever you add a filter here, it's it it is added to the to the to this list that you can select. So you can play with any property of any filter. And in this way, you know, all the filters that you apply to your objects can be modified and animated. And uh, yeah, by doing that, you can create really cool animations. And I hope, uh, yeah, this uh, helps you to get nicer animations out of your Paraview uh, visualizations. I hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, and find it useful. And yeah, stay safe. See you in next videos.